What's going on traders? Welcome to Investing Trends where we talk about the latest news and trades on trending stocks. This week, the market rallied to close to another record high. Today, the Dow went up 260 points and the S&P 500 is over 4,100. CNBC indicates that the investors have put in more money into stocks in the last 5 months than the previous 12 months combined. Let that sink in. Elon Musk asked Kathy Wood this week what she thought about Warren Buffett's favorite market indicator flashing red recently. On April 5th, Elon Musk replied to one of Kathy Wood's tweets by asking, what do you think of the unusually high ratio of S&P market cap to the GDP? He is referring to the Buffett indicator, which takes the combined market cap of a country's publicly traded stocks and divides it by the latest quarterly GDP figure. The Buffett indicator measures the ratio of stock market's total value of U.S. economic output. The concept is that significantly huge valuations relative to the GDP can only stay at those levels if future earnings also increase and keeps up. This can happen for a few years, but over a long time span, outsized profits trend back to their traditional share of GDP. When that reversion to the mean in profits occur, valuations will drop. The S&P 500 represents about 78% of the total market cap of U.S. stocks and it surpassed $33 trillion this year, more than 150% of the latest estimate for fourth quarter U.S. GDP of $21.5 trillion. This is a popular and trending chart that people refer to when discussing about the Buffett indicator. The chart indicates that we are in a strongly overvalued territory and higher than what it was during the internet bubble. Besides this chart, this article does a very good job of digging a bit deeper and shows more charts that analyzes the concept. It breaks it down as the first chart showing the corporate equities to GDP. The next one is the comparison of Wilshire 5000 to GDP. The Wilshire 5000 is the market index that represents a market cap weighted index of all American stocks actively traded in the US. It currently holds around 3,500 stocks but initially, it held 5,000 stocks, therefore the name. I want to skip to the last chart, which is the best one. It is an overlay with the S&P 500. It goes back from 1950, and looking at this chart, the indicator is pretty darn good. It's not perfect, but it does show signs of useful leading indicator, historically anyways. With this chart, let's play the predicting game and see if you can successfully time the market. Be honest with yourself. If I am showing you just this part of the chart, would you think that a correction is coming? It just broke the 100% line, levels never seen before, and the S&P is at the all-time high. Let's move this over. How about now? If we move it over to here, where it is lower than the year 2000 dot-com bubble, would you think that a correction is coming? Cather's response to Elon was that the gauge is inaccurate and argued that the heavy valuations of certain technology stocks were justified. She is suggesting that the GDP understates economic growth because it doesn't fully account for increased productivity. Technological innovations today are dwarfing those in previous eras driving down prices and fueling demand. Kathy Wood also drew a line between the dot-com bubble and the current hype around tech stocks. She tweeted saying, back then, investors chased the dream before the tech was ready and while costs were too high. And after gestating over 20 to 30 years, the dream has turned into reality. In short, Kathy Wood's view is that the disconnect between the S&P 500's market cap and the national GDP isn't worrying because GDP is a flawed measure, unprecedented innovation justifies higher company valuations, and technological advances are cutting costs so inflation won't be a problem either. Her stance conflicts with the Oracle of Omaha's indicator featured in a Fortune article back in 2001 as probably the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment. 
So with that, only time will tell to find out which investor is right. Here is the trading activity of ARK Invest ETFs on a consolidated basis for the week. It includes ARKX, so tracking a total of 6 funds. ARK's top 5 holdings is keeping the ship steady. Tallock Health came down to number 3 and Square went back up to its number 2 spot. There has been active trades with buys and sells, but for the week, ARK Invest has been buying more shares than selling them. One thing I've noticed as a key theme this week is that ARK has accumulated a lot of cash this week. Morgan Stanley is a proxy for cash and looks like Kathy is getting some dry powder ready to buy stocks. Keep an eye out for when she releases all that cash. Huge buying pattern on Trimble which is high up in the number 40 holding. Bullish trend on this stock with 1.8 million shares bought this week alone. Investors in DraftKings were also winners this week as Kathy is supporting the stock by buying close to 15% of its existing holdings. Kratos Defense and Alphabet stock were bought in large amounts. As you should know by now that these stocks are used as cash-like instruments at ARK Invest and the common trend is that ARK is building cash this week. Same with Amazon stock. They bought 3,000 shares which doesn't look a lot but each share cost $3,000. Plus, it is a 17% increase in the number of shares held by ARK Invest. Again, common theme, building cash. Kathy has been on a selling trend on Taiwan Semiconductor as she sold more than 45% of her holdings this week alone. I would not be surprised if she sold off all the shares, total holdings of TSM in the near future. Lastly, she sold off all of Adobe shares this week. The trending meter on ARK Invest has been low lately, so we'll pause on doing weekly updates. I will continue to keep a tab on it and show you only the big highlights that come about. Kathy is rebuilding its funds at the moment and she may come back stronger than before. Remember the good old days? Whenever ARK bought a stock, the price would jump up after hours and investors would chase for easy gains? To be honest, it's not happening lately. As we see, stocks like Palantir and Butterfly Networks not budging, just to name a few. Well, that's it for this video. Hope watching the daily trades of ARK Invest gives you more confidence in the stocks you're holding or new stock ideas to buy. Let this be a guide to your investing needs and long-term investing to reach financial freedom. Please invest safely, subscribe to the channel, and hit that like button. I thank you, appreciate you, and see you next time.